Welcome to Bright Hope Creations. I'm Kara, and I'm so happy to be featuring Lawn Fawn for Simon Says Stamp today. We're going to use these special delivery stamps and coordinating dies, Den Sweet Den, just a couple of stamps, and some words from Dad Plus Me, and Trees Before and Afters, the Lift the Flap Tree Backdrop in dark brown wood grain card stock, and then also the puffy cloud backdrop landscape and that's out of cilantro but we're turning it upside down to make leaves for the trees and the hammock and trees we're just using the hammock part there and the little flowers for magic iris birdhouse add-on both of those are cut out of the hello sunshine remix six by six paper pad as well as a piece for the background of the card all right, we're gonna start with some jet black ink and we're gonna stamp these up in the misty. And I'm using jet black ink from Lawn Fawn because it is Copic friendly and we'll be using Copic markers today. So I'll ink up those stamps and close the door. And there is one owl, but I want another owl as well. And I wasn't sure what type of wings I wanted, so I just stamped those to, to be ready. Now inside one of the lift the flap trees, I'm going to put this little sentiment and I'm using an anti-static pad and clear ink to stamp that up. And I'm going to use some white embossing powder to sprinkle that on and it doesn't stick anywhere but where I want because I used that anti-static pad first. I'll heat this up, melt it with my heat tool and then that's ready to go. So I want to start coloring my owls, but I like to put a piece of paper underneath when I use Copic markers. Now you can see I already colored the owl up above, but I'm going to color this one the same way. And I started with a base of light colors with the E50 and the W0, so the warm gray. But then I get right into those dark colors and I'm starting with an E47 to kind of outline and give some texture to those feathers on my owl's body. I'm just making little lines and this is gonna kind of get uh, tempered down with the Copics that come after it. So here's the E44 and I'm putting in some more of those lines. I was looking at owls on Google, Googled them, and uh, that's what helped me determine how I wanted to create these two. Now owls come in a large variety but uh, this is the way I decided to go today so this is the W3 and I'm making more of those feathers and just going right over the rest of those darker feathers then blending all that in with the E51 on the bottom and the top and now I'm gonna help define those eyes a little bit more this is the E55. And then I'll blend that into what I already have there for the eyes with the E53 and then the E51. Now, if you look at the owl above, he's a little more blended together on his body than the one underneath. This owl gets blended to that extent too, but uh, I like it both ways. I think it could have been unblended or not as blended. But either way, now I'm coming in with the white Signo gel pen and adding some white feathers to the sky. Well, to both of them, really. But I still come back with some Copics, and here I am blending in that body. I used the E41, E44 just to get that uh, those feathers more blended together. Back to the E41. I just go back and forth. Uh, when's enough enough? Well, <laughs> he told me, I, I never know. I just keep going. And that's the good thing about Copics is that you can just keep layering. Now, usually you want to just add that white gel pen at the end and not use Copics over it. But uh, I don't always, <laughs> I don't always follow the rules. I haven't lost a Copic tip over that yet. But I also kind of uh, blend my white into the rest of the body even though it's a gel pen, it, I kind of act like it's more of a bit of acrylic paint and just kind of blend it in with my finger. All right, putting on those little feet 
and on the beak is it an E44 and an E42. And I decided these guys needed another color in there just to brighten them up. And so I'm using an E13 to give a little bit more of a red tone in their feathers as well. Now onto the wing, and I did one already so that I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, that is an E51, and then I'm kind of defining the different wing feathers with the W3, and then putting in kind of a stripy look with the E44, and also with that E13, and then kind of blending it a little bit together with the W3 again. Then I can come in with that white gel pen and add some of those white stripes to the feathers. All right, I kind of blend that together with my finger and come back in and darken up some of those lines that got too blended away. And then I'm uh, just, again, layering those colors and blending it, but still trying to keep the texture showing. Now in the special delivery stamp set, these wings go great with the Waving Pull Tabs Starter Kit die set. And uh, so they flap behind the, the owl or the bird if you want them to with the pull tab. But I'm gonna use them a little differently today. If I was to use them as flapping wings, I would only color one wing like the right wing and then i would stamp it again and only color the left wing so that when i cut them out i would have them separate but uh, today i'm going to use them so that he can hold his little book so i'm actually going to reverse these wings and i'll show you that better later when i put this together all right just finishing up coloring in some books and I chose colors from my background in order to get books that uh, kind of matched up there. And now I'm going to cut everything out with the coordinating dies. Now those little wings I end up not using. I wasn't sure how these guys were going to sit so I just decided to make all the different uh, wing varieties that they would use and uh, in the end, I don't use those two that are uh, down by their body. All right, well, now I'm just looking to see where I want to position this and cut my paper down to the four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm also cutting out my tree canopies. I know this top row will go across the top of my card but then I'm going to keep two attached and that will give me a wider section for the back behind the trees and I don't end up using the bottom part of that backdrop so now I'm getting out my lawn fawn cilantro and artichoke ink I decide just to use the cilantro ink on these but I'm going to ink blend the the leaves give it a little more definition there so it's always fun to find new uses for a dye and so this of course is the puffy cloud backdrop but it works perfectly for large groups of leaves like this it also could be bushes if I had it uh, going the other way but you can see how much that inking has changed it it gives it more dimension than just that flat look. So I'm going to do the leaves that will go on the back of the tree. And so I put that little piece of paper in there so that I could get just at the edges and not the entire die cut. Give it a little um, division there. And then finish up with the leaves at the bottom, the edges, and then ink blend the inside of the tree and this is that little sentiment i embossed from special delivery you are a hoot <laughs> and i'm ink blending around that little sentiment so that it kind of brings the eye right to it i'm i'm using walnut and black licorice this reminds me of that woodsy the owl when i was a kid the campaign about uh give a hoot don't pollute <laughs> <laughs> Help Woodsy spread the word. Never be a dirty bird in the city or in the woods.
Help keep America looking good. <laughs> That's my public service announcement for the day as I clean the ink off my glass mat. All right, back to our card. So I'm just cutting out the uh, background of the tree so that I know that it will fit back there and not show in front. I tried to put a little bit of tape runner on there, but decided to put some glue on so I knew that it would hold better. So I'm going to open up that flap and see the sentiment inside. I'm going to add another back to another one of those holes so that when the owl is in there, if any of the background shows up, you would just see brown. And I ink blended it the same way. So rather than seeing the sky coming through the hole, you would see an inside of a tree. Now the middle one, I'm not going to do anything with that because our owl in the hammock is going to cover that up. And so it doesn't need to open at all. Well, I'm deciding how low I want that back part to be for the tree leaves. And then I just cut that straight across and put some adhesive on the back and then just add that to my panel. And then I decided not to glue down the tree backdrop yet, but I wanted to put the canopy of leaves on the front. So I added some glue to the trees and there are the leaves. All right, now for the little fun intricate parts. So here's everything cut out and I'm just deciding where everything was gonna go. I didn't put that tree backdrop onto the panel yet because I wanted to be able to uh, move things around if I needed to or come from the back of the trees if I had to. But then I decided, yeah, I can get this all in without moving that around. So I'm adding it now to the panel and you can see my owl is already tucked into that hole in the tree and he, I could have put his wings that are down next to him or behind him, but decided that they weren't necessary. But then his little friend in the hammock, he's going to be reading the books. So he's got the pile of books in there with him. So he has quite a few to choose from. And then I wanted to decide how high up this book was gonna be, where his arms should be. Just, I wanted to make sure you could still see his face. So I'm gonna cut out these two wings and the right wing is going to go on the left side of his body and the left wing on the right. I just folded the wing behind him and then the other wing up there, fold that behind that side of his body. And now he can be holding that book with his wings. Put a little glue on the back of that wing and then set it on the back of his body there. Let's hold that for a little bit so it stays set. And then I can glue the other wing to the back of his body. Now I'm not gluing his wings to the book yet because I want to be able to play around a little bit with that. I'm creasing the book at the spine, the two lines that uh, make the spine so that the book has a bit of dimension as well. And now I can uh, glue that onto his wing so that he holds that book and it's a little bit out from his body just to give some dimension and the owl's face isn't covered up at all. Put a little glue on his wing and pinch that together and hold it and then be patient and hold it. <laughs> but now that I put him in the hammock, I want his wing to kind of uh, sit in front of the side of the hammock. I could have just tucked it in, but in order to get it in front, I just clipped the wing a little bit so that now his wings are kind of in front of that hammock. The hammock die set has a back to the hammock that's solid, but I wanted to use another one with the uh, mesh look to it so that it looked like there was mesh behind as well. Uh, the solid one's great for like if I was 
hanging him and he was going to be suspended. But for my purpose, it was nice to be able to see that hammock uh, all the way through to see that there's more, give it more texture, really. So there he is in his hammock and it's glued together. And then I'm just going to make sure that his toe isn't coming out. He just clipped his toenail a little bit <laughs> so that he's not hanging out there. And then tuck those books in behind him. And I can put a little glue on there so that it'll sit nice on those trees. Some on the edges. And then with this hammock edges, the the little ropes, I'm just pushing them so that they look like they are going to go around the tree limbs a little bit. You can see over here too, just kind of get them moved so they, they look like they're tied to the tree. Glue down the owl in the hole so he doesn't fly away. <laughs> and now I'm putting some flowers in, in the tree. Now, I don't know if this tree would really have blossoms, but I thought it was a nice way to move that color across the card a bit. So we have that color at the top. I'm using a stylus and just a piece of foam and pushing that in to the foam, the, the little flowers. And then uh, that gives it a little bit more dimension. But as you can see here, they were a, a little too cupped. So I'm just taking my finger and lightly uh, bringing the back flattening them out a little bit and then I'll glue each one on there. Now they are all that pink color but I thought it was nice to have a variation so I flipped a couple over or a few over and so there's a few white in there as well. Just kind of broke up the color in that. All right well now it's time for that sentiment. The first word owl comes from this special delivery and then this is the word always from dad and me. And then I'm using a B <laughs> and the phrase thankful for you. So it says, I'll always be thankful for you. I find it fun to put different sentiments together like this. And Lawn Fawn makes it easy with the shape of their sentiments because they all kind of link together pretty, pretty straight. So... I have them all together and just a little bit of uh, nudging <laughs> with my stylus. And then I'm going to put those on the lid of the Misty. And this is also going to be heat embossed. So I use my anti-static pad again and some clear ink to stamp it down. And then I'll use white embossing powder sprinkle that on and I will heat that to melt it off camera and then there it is all set to go now I cut it into a 3 8 of an inch strip and I'm just deciding where I want to snip it off and I'm just going to make a little flag out of the end by cutting in the center and then cutting from each end into the center there. Now I was debating on the color of that sentiment strip and decided to go with this paper bag card stock from Lawn Fawn to kind of match up with the owls rather than the green of the tree. I thought that would, you know, detract from the top of the card if I had green there too. So now I'm just adhering it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. And this card is all done. So two owls hanging out, sharing a story. Can't get much better than that. Well, I thank you for watching today and hope you were inspired to create a little lawn fawn scene of your own. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.